G'day guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be sorting out this coolant overflow bottle um, because as you can see there's quite a lot of calcium build up in there and um, it's probably time for a, a coolant flush anyway. So we're going to sort this out, do a coolant flush on the car and um, yeah get this sorted out because if that calcium breaks off and um, gets stuck somewhere obviously bad, clog up your cooling system and then you overheat and blow up your car which is not good at all so that's why we do this preventative maintenance to stop that from happening all right so first thing i'm going to take off the splash tray just to make it a bit easier so we can get the bucket under a bit better and um get easier access to the uh, bottom radiator hose, uh, we'll pull that off, drain it out into the bucket, and um, yeah, we'll get stuck into it. Alright, so the splash tray is really easy to get off. Two bolts at the back, um, and then obviously however many you've got at the front, obviously just take them off, and out it comes. Um, very handy to have one of these. Um, doesn't provide a lot of torque, although makes things a lot easier. Um, just with undoing and doing back up them sort of bolts. Um, so then that gives you really nice access under the car where you can get to the lower radiator hose, um, which is obviously that one there. It goes into the radiator. Um, don't be confused with the other one. Um, there's also a tap or something over this side that you can get to without having to take the splash guard off um, the splash tray sorry but I think this is just a more easier way to do it other than having to um, try and get fingers in to um, undo that tap there I don't know if you can see it it's a little bit hard there we go um, and then also that'll obviously probably be pretty slow and it looks like it'll just drop coolant everywhere, all over, <laughs> everything. So, yeah, I think this would be a lot cleaner um, way to do it. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that hose comes off easy enough. Um, yeah, we'll see. All right, so you can use the tap over this side, um, or you can just undo the bottom radiator hose on the other side. Uh, I think this is a little bit easier because there's just not a lot of room and the... Um, the clamp that's holding it on is in a bit of an awkward spot and I don't think we'll be able to get any pliers in there so we'll just go with this, it'll be a bit slower, uh, a little bit more messy but as you can see that coolant's looking a bit gross so yeah definitely a good move to um, to flush it out. Now obviously it's a bit slow at the moment, uh, I still have the overflow bottle cap on so we'll take that off and that'll uh, help to increase the flow, make it a bit quicker. As you can see it's made it a hell of a load quicker yeah, it's shot out everywhere. That's um, one of the problems with um, trying to do the tap, as it's um, yeah, just a bit messy. But yeah, you can see that that coolant, it's definitely had its day. I mean, the car was not getting hot or anything like that, but um, yeah, definitely, definitely time for a change. All right, so it's just dribbling out now. It's just about done. Um, Obviously gonna have to give that a bit of a wash, but that's all right. So that's pretty much finished now. Um, the bucket's not very full, which is good. Um, we'll just let that do a bit more of a drain, uh, and then we'll get the the hose, uh, stick it in the in the overflow bottle, um, turn the car on, turn the heater on, um, and just let it open up the, the thermostat, make sure all the coolant's out of that part of the system, out of the engine, um, and then obviously open up the heater core as well and um, get the coolant out of there. Uh, so we're doing a full flush. Um, yeah, get rid of all that shit. Um, and then put some nice new stuff in. So let's do that. All right, so we've just put the bung back in. Um, topped up the reservoir with just some bit of, bit of tap water. Uh, we'll just let that run. Turn the uh, heater on, obviously. So yeah, uh, we'll just let that run for a little bit. 
Um, I'll turn the heater on in a minute. We'll let all the systems and everything open up. Uh, make sure that all that coolant is actually flushed out of there properly. Um, and then we'll release the bung again and um, drain everything out good and proper this time. And um, then we'll be able to move on to the next step. All right, so heater is now on max, max blower. Um, and now we'll just let it get up to temperature and um, then we'll give it its final flush. Now it's very important that you check your temperatures as you go along. You don't want your car overheating in this stage um, because that would obviously be very, very bad. So yeah, we do not want that at all. Now, we'll just move over here and um, we'll discuss why that calcium builder happens. So, when you if you're changing your coolant by yourself at home or if you're getting a mechanic to do it you need to make sure that if you are using a um, concentrated coolant that you get demineralized water um, if you just use tap water this is what help happens um, because obviously tap water has a lot of um, minerals and whatnot in it to um, for like when we drink it, it gives us uh, all the minerals and stuff like fluoride and and um, all them sort of things. And obviously every state's different with what they put into their water. Um, lots of things go into it. Uh, all that stuff is good for us, but not good for your cooling system um, because this is what happens. Calcium builds up, and like I was saying before, if any of it breaks off, um, then yeah, bad bad news. Um, can block up your radiator and cause major uh, cooling issues and obviously bad. Um, so as you can see in there, it's gone a bit more green now which is good. It means that the, um, yeah, as you can see, it's starting to get a bit greener. Uh, the heater cords obviously opened up now and we're starting to uh, flush everything properly. Um, as we can see, Heat's obviously going up as well, which is good, um, getting up to temperature. Alright, so coolant temps now reached 100 degrees. Um, that's all good. The core's obviously opened up now. We've reached our operating temperature. Um, obviously a little bit past it. The thermo fans will kick in shortly, um, just to keep it a bit cooler. But that's what we want. We want it to reach temperature. Obviously it's sitting here on a hot day, so it'll obviously get hot quick. Uh, but that's all good. We'll shut it off um, and turn the heater off and we'll be good to do our final flush. Alright, so we're all shut off now. Got up to temperature. As you can see, a lot more green in there. Um, so that's why it's so important to get it up to operating temperature and also open up your heater core um, because all that coolant is, was obviously still trapped in there and uh, if you didn't do that, um, you wouldn't have got that out. So now we come back under the car and we um, just... Slowly undo the camera. When you slowly just undo the tap and um, watch as it all falls on the ground again. Um, obviously, be careful when you're doing this um, because it can be hot because you obviously just ran the car up. So, um, yeah, just be careful with what you're doing. That's all right, it's mainly water anyway, so it'll just flush all that shit down the driveway. I'll give it a proper clean later on. Alright so our next step is we're going to take this out and uh, try and give it a bit of a clean up and um, yeah just see if we can clean this up get rid of all that uh, calcium out of there and um, yeah stop any issues from arising. So obviously we just got a couple of bolts to undo a few hoses to take off. Um, there's obviously this one here and this is one at the bottom as well. Um, so just obviously these little thingies, get the pliers on it and um, take them off. Um, so yeah, let's get this off. All right, so once you undo your two bolts, obviously really simple. Um, this hose obviously just slips off from here. Again, really easy. Um, that's just, if it gets super hot, um, overflows, goes back into the radiator. Um, and then you have your bottom hose um, if you are like me and you've got a battery slide relocation, it'll help to 
just get that breather hose um, out of the way the best you can. Um, if you've got one of these little hooky things on it, um, yeah, try and put that somewhere um, and that will make it a little bit easier. And now it's the task of trying to get this bottom one off and yeah we'll go from there. So uh, we've got this off now. Have a bit of better of a look inside there. As you can see, pretty just gross. Um, yeah, definitely it was time for a ch for a clean. So uh, yeah, we'll give this a clean and um, yeah, we'll see what the finished product looks like. So yeah, here we go, guys. This is uh, the finished product. Um, as you can see, it's. Um, yeah, it's, it's come up pretty good actually, um, gave it a really good clean just using a bit of um, just uh, coolant reservoir, um, cooler, um, cleaner sorry, and um, yeah, no, she's come up a treat. <laughs> no, just kidding. This is a um, brand new one, genuine one from Ford, um, so I thought, you know, why not just buy a brand new one, um, saves trying to clean that one, um, which is probably impossible anyway. So yeah, this is a nice brand new one. Um, we just got to swap over the little bung thing at the back, um, and then obviously just bolt it back up, exactly the way that the other one went on. So um, let's get into that. All right, so this little thing, a little bit tricky to get in. Um, you just got to push really hard and twist, and, um, and it clips back into place. Now, the bottom radiator hose, real simple. It just has to be lined up right. Um, you can obviously see, uh, it's a bit hard for you guys to see, but there is two, these little um, grooves on here. They obviously line up with the hose and you just uh, got to push it in with a little bit of force. Um, let me get it right. A little bit of force and then that goes in and then gets secured with this little thing um, which just I'm gonna push around that and then just clips in there easy as so give it a bit of a test wiggle not coming off that's good All right, so just put that back into position like that and grab our top hose Chuck that back on, and then we get the pliers back over the clamp and position it back up over where it was. Give it a bit of a pull, not coming off. Cool. We then grab our two 10 mil bolts, line up the holes. Chuck the bolts back in the holes. Get our whizzy gun, put it onto forward. Number one, number two. Give it a test wiggle, pretty secure. It's not going anywhere. Now we'll jump under the car. Uh, make sure that that bottom tap is screwed all the way in, nice and tight, and we've got no dramas down there. Uh, and then we can tuck the funnel in and fill the bad girl up with some coolant. Alrighty, so here's our coolant. Obviously um, diluted a lot with water, uh, but obviously it's still you know green, although it's on the darker green side. Um, and yeah, a bit stinky. Probably definitely time for a change. Goodness knows when it was actually done. Um, so. We've got some of this nice green new on coolant uh, ready to go. All right, so when you're doing your coolant change on your Falcon, uh, you're obviously gonna want a funnel. Um, that's helpful for when you're uh, bleeding the system, um, getting all the bubbles out. 
Uh, you also want some compatible coolant. Um, this is just a premix um, from Super Cheap and obviously compatible with uh, Ford. Um, and you're going to want about 12 litres of it. Um, I can't remember exactly how much you need. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's around 10 litres or something like that. Um, that's a um, 13 litre bucket and obviously there's a lot of water in there as well and it's pretty much full. So, uh, I mean, a lot of it did go on the ground, um, but it's about 10 litres. All right, so at the start, you can basically just pour it in. Um, obviously making sure that your um, tap down the bottom is done up nice and tight. Um, and if you're taking any hoses off, make sure they're obviously done up. And then you just get your coolant. Um, deal with the child lock on the bottle. Oh, Jesus. And um, you can just pour it on in. And as you can see, that coolant is oh, splashy. There's obviously a lot. Why is that dry up? For goodness sake. As I was saying, this coolant is a lot more green. Obviously, because it's brand new. Obviously, while you're doing this, listen for any leaks or anything. The last thing you want is to be filling up your coolant and have it leaking somewhere. Um, obviously, bad. Um, even have a look under the car, make sure you see nothing. And obviously, we're all good. All right, so that's the first six liters in. Um, just let it burp. Um, is basically what it's doing. You hear it bubbling. And um, basically all it's gonna do now is get all the air bubbles out of the system. Um, and basically that'll all go back down. Um, I suspect that this will probably maybe be down this level somewhere, if not below that, because um, as you can see, it's already dropping quite quickly. Um, and then once we do this six and put about um, maybe three liters of the next one in, uh, we'll start the car up um, and then um, obviously leave the funnel in there and then watch as the coolant actually flows into all the places it's meant to be and um, it'll go down even further and we'll be able to um, get the measurement exactly where we want it. Um, obviously, depending on what the temperature of the car is, if it's um, at its operating temperature, it'll be sitting about here. Um, and then, obviously, if it's cool, it'll be sitting at the min. Um, so we'll just wait for this to go down a little bit further and uh, we'll start the car up. All right, so we got the car on now, obviously. Um, and it's just gonna bleed, do its thing, burp a bit, splash and stuff around, um, and it'll eventually sort itself out. So that's six, say, seven litres at the moment. So we maybe have another three to go. Um, obviously, during this time, you're gonna wanna turn your heater back on again, um, and obviously get that cooler back into the heater core. And um, yeah, that'll obviously suck up a bit of coolant as well. Um, so I'll go do that and we'll see just how much more that drops down. All right, so that heat has just kicked on and as you can see, it's now dropping um, a bit slower. Uh, but yeah, it has dropped just a little bit. Um, it's currently just sitting at about 76 degrees. So it's pretty much at operating temperature. Um, so where it's sitting now, it's pretty good. Um, I mean, if it's overfilled too much, uh, it'll just come out anyway, so it's no big deal. Um, but where it's sitting at the moment, that's pretty good. Um, definitely can't complain with that. Um, so we'll just leave it sit, get up to temperature again, um, make sure that the heater gets hot, opens up the core properly, and it'll probably drop just a little bit more. Um, but where it's sitting, it's not bad at all. 
and um, we'll just maintain hopefully that level there pretty happy with that um, obviously if you've never seen inside a overflow bottle um, as you can see there's a bit of a slit in the top there if you if your coolant gets to the point where it's starting to boil um, which this will tell us 124 degrees is where this uh, coolant is um, got its anti-boil to um, so it's probably 130 degrees and that'll start to boil and um, obviously it just goes uh, in there and then <clears throat> at the bottom at that little hole um, so but as we can see if I hold this up to the light um, I'll flip it over see a bit better um, yeah pretty manky pretty gross obviously a lot of shit has broken off um, but I've never had a problem with it so it's probably okay um, but obviously something to keep an eye on um, all this shit probably just breaks down anyway and um, if I was to strain this uh, we'd probably find a lot of that shit's probably already in there so um, good thing that we did this good preventative maintenance and um, yeah definitely something to to maintain on your car all right so car is indicating cool this is obviously pretty cool too only 87 degrees um, so it's sitting pretty nicely just give it a bit of a rev Obviously big girl sounds pretty mint. Get a bit more of that coolant moving around in there. Sitting at a good level. Pretty much where it should be sitting, uh, but where it's hot. If that doesn't sound just lovely. I don't know what does. Here we go. I'm slowly going down a little bit now. Just sitting below the axe. Um, so we'll just chuck a little bit more in it. Just get it up to about the middle of the X and uh, that'll give us plenty of headway um, if it decides to drop any further. Um, so yeah, that'll be good. Alright, so I'll just top that back up to about the middle of the X, uh, which is about where it needs to sit. Um, car's obviously nice and hot now. Um, now, also one thing to consider, because the turbo is also coolant cooled, as well as oil fed, um, the turbo will obviously retain a bit of coolant, uh, but that will obviously be flushed out as well when we did that flush. Um, so, that's obviously something to keep in mind. Uh, but that's good now, we don't need the funnel, we'll chuck the, the cap back on, now it's always important to make sure that that's done up nice and tight, um, because if it's not, that's another reason you can have cooling issues, is if the, um, is if the, uh, your reservoir cap isn't done up tight enough. Um, you can actually um, get higher temperatures. So we'll just take this for a quick drive just around the block um, just to get it under driving conditions and then just recheck and um, refill if need be. All right, so just going for a bit of a drive. Um, obviously, we're on a bit of an angle here, so the coolant's obviously not showing accurate. Um, so obviously park it up on a flat surface and double check after your little drive um, and then leave the car to cool down. Um, and then double check and um, obviously reapply any more coolant that you might need. Um, obviously you're going to want to give your engine bay a little bit of a clean up after that. Um, just clean up all the bits of coolant and shit uh, because it'll sort of set on there and go white and look a bit gross. Um, so I recommend using a bit of orange agent um, and that just helps to clean up um, anything inside your engine. Obviously safe to use in your engine bay and um, yeah give it a bit of a clean up because uh, you don't need any 
coolant sitting in there. Obviously, if you've made a mess, get the hose, hose it off, and um, obviously, if you've taken your splash tray off, um, refit it, and um, yeah, carry on as usual. So there you are, guys. Just a little quick video on how to um, change your coolant. Swap over a coolant reservoir bottle and uh, flush your coolant. Um, very important to do. Um, also, make sure you note down when you did it, um, so when it comes time to, if you still have the car, um, because this apparently is good for half a million kilometres um, or six years. So, yeah, um, obviously just keep an eye on uh, when you changed it so you can uh, maintain your coolant changes, uh, which is just as important as engine oil. So I hope you have enjoyed today's video guys, if you have make sure you like, comment and subscribe and um, I'll catch you at the next one. Alright, little bonus if you're here to the end, um, I've obviously just drained the coolant uh, but as you can see there's a lot of shit floating around in there, um, so that's what I was talking about, a lot of that stuff has obviously broken off um, and gotten small and it's been flushed out which is great. Um, so if your overflow bottle is looking like mine this is what is going on inside your um, inside your cooling system so probably a good idea to do the same thing and give it a flush um, because it looks like I'm gold panning right now and uh, I wish that was gold so yeah definitely a good idea to uh, give it a flush give it a clean and um, get rid of all that shit because that's not good